Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Beth Ann and today I wanted to talk briefly about Winter in Sokcho by um, Elisa Chua Dusapin, um, who is a French-Korean author and I read this book for the Booktube Prize, the first round in the translated fiction category um, and I've already posted a video with my rankings of the six books that I read so I will link to that down below if you want to see how this one performed um, compared to the other books um, that I read in that category. So um, it's, it's hard to come up with thoughts about this book and I will link to a review by Reiner over at Rainier Books who I thought did a really great job of just presenting a succinct summary of the book. Um, and he also sort of mentioned like it's just more of a description like it's, it's sort of hard to I don't know, it's sort of hard to express an opinion about a book like this. Um, it's beautifully written. The writing is very clear and simple, which I really like. It's very short. I, re I actually read this book in one day um, because it was just, yeah, it was just very easy to sit down and consume. So um, in this book, we are following an unnamed narrator. Um, it is first person, so, um, and, and, nobody ever calls her by name so we don't know her name um, and she lives in the city of Sokcho which is in South Korea but it's close to the North Korean border and um, she has been to college in Seoul but has moved home to Sokcho where um, it seems like she's an only child and her mother lives there her mother is a fishmonger working in the fish market um, selling fish and the unnamed narrator uh, works in a guest house or, or a hostel and she does um, a lot of the cleaning and does laundry for the guests and cooks for the guests and for the proprietor Mr. Park and this book is just a very quiet um, just sort of snapshot into the psyche and emotional life of this one character she's um, she's at a very uncertain point in her life. So she's done her education, but she's in a dead end job. She has a boyfriend who's pushing her, you know, like, what are you going to do? We should move back to Seoul. And he's very ambitious. And so he's mostly not present for the novel. We see a couple of interactions between the narrator and this boyfriend because he's gone to Seoul to try to get a job. And then he returns to try to convince her to move to Seoul with him. Um, so he's like a, you know, go getter wanting to get out of Sokcho. And, uh, and she's very ambivalent. Um, it seems like she's got her routine and um, she doesn't want to leave her mother. Um, I think we assume that that's the reason that she came back to Sokcho in the first place. And, uh, and now she doesn't want to leave her. Um, and we see glimpses of her relationship with her mother, which um, to me seems maybe sort of codependent um, or, or at least the mother is perhaps overly emotionally dependent on the daughter. Um, and so we see the daughter's, uh, you know, some, some, some of her reactions to, to being with her mother that um, to me, you know, they sort of raise a little bit of a red flag of like, okay, there, there's something not healthy in this relationship. Um, and maybe it would be for your own good to move to Seoul, but, but, but the character has this ambivalence. So she's at this very uncertain, ambivalent time in her life. Um, I don't, I'll use the word lost. She, she sort of seems a little bit lost and without direction. And so into this mix, we have an interesting guest who starts to stay at the guest house. He is a French man, um, and he's actually a fairly famous comic artist. Um, I guess sort of a graphic novel, but his books are described as not having a lot of text and just being very like bold, powerful, um, but simple drawings. And they're about um, a main character, uh, a solo guy who, who sort of travels the world. And I think he's done something like 10 of these and each one is set in a different location around the globe. And so this artist slash author has come to Sokjo to explore it as the potential setting for the last of these novels that he's going to write about this person. And so this character also has a little bit of similar sort of lostness and ambivalence and uncertainty, um, similar to the main character, because he's not really in Sokcho for a specific reason. He's kind of here just to wander around and look for inspiration um, for this very open-ended project. Like he hasn't even committed to the location. And so the two of them strike up a relationship. It's not really clear what the definition of the relationship is. Um, 
there's some aspects to it that feel like friendship, but then there's some aspects to it that feel like uh, an incipient romantic relationship. So there's a lot of ambivalence and uncertainty there too. And the narrator is, is sort of annoyed by that at various points throughout the story. So um, yeah, we just see sort of this odd thing going on between the two of them. And uh, they, they, they go on some uh, day trips together. They go up to see the North Korean border together. They go up into the mountains to a monastery together. Um, so they definitely build, you know, a real connection, but it's very undefined. And then we also have this mystery that's just in the background where her father was French and had been with her mother and then left and went back to France before the narrator was even born. It's not clear that she even knows his name. And so I think some of her interest in this French artist is, is also partly because of that background and he's also an older man. And so I think that uh, contributes to the ambivalence in, in their relationship there. And that's really all there is to say about the book. It's ambivalent and uncertain. Um, so it was a delight to read. Um, but as I say in my ranking video, sort of the quick snippet, this, this didn't make it into my top choices of this group, even though I really enjoyed reading it. I essentially read it in one sitting in one day because I didn't want to put it down, but it just didn't quite go far enough. So it's a very contemplative, character-driven book about relationships between people. Um, but I feel like for a book to just really push over the edge into excellence in that category, I just need a little bit more of a revelation, just like a little bit more of a revelation about how this particular character works or how humanity in general works. Um, not even plot, like there's not much plot in this book. Like I'm not talking about plot. I just mean like just a teeny bit more insight um, would have pushed this book much higher in my ranking than it ended up. And I'm of course now forgetting. I think it, I think I ranked it five out of six. You have to check out my rankings. So anyway, so that is my quick thought about this book. The thing that's really intriguing to me about this book is that it was the debut novel for this author. And she wrote it when she was 24. And I think she's now like in her early 30s and she has three or four more novels out now. Um, Reiner actually talks about it in his review that I linked down below. Um, so given how good this first one was, um, definitely an author that I'm gonna look out for and I would like to read um, some of her additional uh, works. So those are my thoughts on Winter and Sokcho. Have you read it? <laughs> what did you think? Are you going to read it? Um, yeah, it's, it's just such a weird, but lovely little novel. So um, yeah, I'd be really curious to hear more from folks who have read it. All right. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.